telling you what they're doing to Maduro right now. In 1954, Jacobo Arbenz was labeled a dictator. He was later disposed in Guatemala. 1973, in Chile, Salvador Allende was labeled a dictator. And many years later, we found out that these were all U.S. conjunctures to remove democratically elected leaders. So 20 years from now, we're going to learn that Maduro was a democratically elected leader and history will once again prove that the U.S. imperialistic octopus had its hands all over this mess. So we cannot allow this to be written down as something that we just stood by and we let it happen because we're sitting, we're standing right now in history. Another coup is occurring. We cannot let history keep repeating itself. The Canadian government's response is shameful. Shame, shame, shame on shame. Shame, 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 shame. Canadian foreign policy has to be an issue because it's changed significantly for the worse. Yes. Not that it was very good before, but we have never been involved directly in a U.S. dirty war. Yes. And everyone knows that the election that was held for President Maduro was one of the cleanest elections of any country in the world. But they can't hide that. There were international observers there. And they don't like the election because they don't like the result of the election. And that's what, and that's what this is about. But this is also part of a bigger project for U.S. imperialism. They are not just looking at Venezuela. They're looking at all of South and Latin America and the Caribbean because they cannot stand, they won't stand, for governments and peoples who try to exert their sovereignty, their right to self-determination, their right to choose their own government and choose what kind of economic and social future they want for themselves. So enough is enough, and Canada has to stop this. It's got to, if they're not prepared to step back, because of public pressure and demonstrations like this one, and we have to come back again with more people and make sure they know this is a sentiment of the Canadian people as a whole, then we're going to have to change the government. It's time. We need a government that will have a foreign policy of peace, disarmament, and that will recognize the rights of other countries to determine their own future free of intervention from the U.S. and from Canada. And what do we say? Hands off Venezuela! Hands off Venezuela! Uh, fellow Canadians, I have an important announcement to make. In light of the fact that the Trudeau government has lost the confidence of the Canadian people from coast to coast to coast, and following the example of Mr. Juan Guaido down there in Caracas, Venezuela, I hereby proclaim myself to be the new Prime Minister of Canada. And, fellow Canadians, my first act as Prime Minister of Canada is to fire Christia Freeland, the Minister of Global Affairs Canada. The straw that broke the camel's back is that she is kowtowing to that bully in Washington, Donald Trump, and being a, li a, a little lackey who has helped to organize this ineffectual and bungling attempt at a coup to overthrow the legitimate government of Mr. Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela. Christian Freeland, you're fired! Go try and collect some EI. That was my first proclamation. My second proclamation is that my new government, my new popular democratic government of Canada, is wishing to express its unequivocal support for President Maduro of Venezuela and for the Bolivarian Revolution, which is a movement for social justice for the people of Venezuela. Yeah! I'm from Afghanistan and on behalf of the uh, progressive community uh, of Afghanistan and, uh, in Canada and uh, also in Afghanistan and around the world, uh, uh, 
I, I support uh, Nicolas Maduro, uh, a gover a legitimate government, and for the last almost more close to 40 years, the same thing what they did to uh, Venezuela in uh, Latin American nations, they do to my country. Uh, shame. They start, shame on them. In the progressive government of Afghanistan is overthrown in 1992 by them. After that, they installed the regime exactly what they did. Today they try to do uh, uh, Juan uh, uh, Guaido in, uh, in, in, in Venezuela. They try to do the same thing, to creating a dual power in the country instead. Instead to go through negotiation for the peaceful settlement of the country. What they did in Afghanistan, they tried to do around the world. I'm a life experience from Afghanistan. It happened to my country. Over, over 1.2 million people killed in that country. Venezuela is under attack. What do we do? Fight back. Venezuela is under attack. What do we do? Fight back. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, if Nicolas Maduro is a dictator, then we need more dictators like Nicolas Maduro. Nicolas Maduro and the Bolivarian Revolution has given 2.5 million housing for the, for the homeless. It has, under, it has undertaken 23 elections in the last 20 years. It has provided free health care and education to the majority of Venezuelans. So this, if this is a dictatorship, then please, we need some of that here in Canada because we have a homeless crisis here in Toronto, just to speak of that. I've been to Venezuela a couple of times and I was there as an elections observer and I can tell you unequivocally that Venezuela is not a dictatorship. If anything, their democratic system, system is much more participatory, much more de democratic and secure than ours. And Venezuelans across Venezuela can tell you that. The fight and the struggle to overthrow the Bolivarian Revolution has been going on for 20 years since 1998 when Hugo Chavez took power. In 2002, there was an attempted coup d'etat against Hugo Chavez. There was an oil strike that tried to paralyze the economy. We all know that it was organized by the U.S., led by the U.S. with regional and local elites. These are lackeys. These are puppets of the U.S. like you have in Brazil, in Honduras, in, in other countries like Guatemala, who themselves have egregious human rights violations and now propose to uh, support democracy around the world. It's ludicrous. Shame. 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 Shame! They're talking that this is some type of constitutional secession, something legal. We have to make it clear. This is completely illegal and a violation of the Venezuelan constitution. It's a coup, plain and simple. Yeah. It's a coup. So Venezuela is under attack. What do we do? Fight back! Venezuela is under attack. What do we do? Fight back! No. Why is Canada, the U.S., and all its regional lackeys trying to overthrow the democratically elected government of Maduro? First, we know it's for the regional resources. Oil, gold, coltrane, all the natural resources that Venezuela has, the United States and its regional allies want to get access to that. And also, that the U.S. is trying to punish the Venezuelan people for daring to dream that you can build an alternative to the neoliberal model, the Bolivarian dream that seeks to unite the people of Latin America, that seeks to give the people of Latin America control of their natural resources. This is what the U.S. is trying to, to punish for people to dream something different. So I think this is what we have to keep in mind. Many of us here from Latin America, we went through what Venezuela is going through. Uh, I am, personally, I am from Chile. I believe that there are many Chileans here. Right. And Chile is exactly the carbon copy of what's happening in Venezuela. That's right. It's something that we cannot allow to happen and succeed. We have to defend Venezuela. We, in Venezuela, there are many hopes uh, that are attached to the revolution because the continent is looking after, is looking all the progressive forces in the continent are looking after Venezuela. They are supporting Venezuela. Yes, we do have the imperialism pushing, but uh, the, the people of the region, uh, they are perfectly aware of what's going on in Venezuela, despite, despite all the media uh, portraying Venezuela as a dictatorship and so on. A dictatorship, of course, the word dictator is used 
whenever you see something inconvenient that doesn't go along with the premises of the imperial power. Uh, Venezuela has demonstrated all over, again and again, many times, over 20 elections, I don't know how many elections, I lost count already, they have won all of them, all of them, of course, the, the opposition has claimed that you know, they were rigged. Thousands of international observers didn't see a single thing. Never a shred of proof in terms of elections being rigged in Venezuela has been delivered. They always claim that. We know that that is not true. We shouldn't give up. And if we don't give up in the, the Bolivarian Revolution, I am sure that it will succeed. Because with friends, like, they are able to come in a winter winter day that is pretty cold to defend the, the Venezuelan Revolution. I think they have good friends. And with those friends, you are going to get, uh, you are going to succeed. So long live the Bolivarian Revolution. Long live, long live. Long live. Long live Maduro. Yeah. Long live Maduro. Long live Alba. Yeah. And all the democratic regimes that are in Latin America that are being under attack. Oh,